Take a minute and picture the cowboy. He's got on his hat and boots, maybe a gun on each hip, and of course, his well-worn blue jeans. This is the image of the cowboy made famous by John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, and Gary Cooper. But hold your horses. They're all white dudes. The real cowboys were and still are way more diverse than what people saw in the movies. And more and more, black cowboys are getting their due. Hey, I'm Asante Bean for American Experience. Let's explore the true story of the American West and black cowboys. Western movies really took off in the 1920s and 30s as an escape from the tough reality of the Great Depression. They were wildly popular, like superhero blockbusters today. As the United States is transformed from being a rural and agrarian nation to one in which most people live in cities or towns, there is a nostalgic embrace of the frontier world lost. We didn't have royalty like in England and other European countries, but we had cowboys. They were our knights in shining armor. Follow me, ma'am, and you'll never go astray. The cowboy was a pop culture icon. He's a superhero who wears denim instead of a cape, flies on horseback, and fights crime. He's rugged and individualist. He has a strong code of right and wrong. Here is a story of a man, hard and relentless, tender and passionate. The cinema cowboy showed audiences the virtues they wanted to see in themselves. But what and who we didn't see in the movies tells its own story. Two events in the mid to late 1800s called people to the frontier, the California Gold Rush and the end of the Civil War. Formerly enslaved people, new immigrants, and other marginalized communities could go west to seek freedom, independence, and prosperity. The reality of life in the American West was much more multi-ethnic. You know, a significant portion of the workforce were people of color, people from Mexico, Native Americans, African Americans, probably making up an eighth to a quarter of the cowboy workforce. So we have a much more complicated reality that contrasts with the whitening of those figures in the Westerns. Black folk were on the frontier. Many of the farming traditions, the traditions of breaking horses, come straight out of an African-American experience. We were doing all of those things that I was experiencing and encountering on television and only seeing white men atop those horses. Nat Love, John Ware, Hector Basie, Biddy Mason, and black-hatted outlaws like Cherokee Bill, Stagecoach Mary, and Ben Hodges. History gives us a cast of characters who lived the Western adventure. Take legendary lawman Bass Reeves, for example, the first black deputy U.S. Marshal west of the Mississippi. He roamed the wild area known then as the Indian Territory. Renowned for his marksmanship, physical strength, and knowledge of the languages of the five tribes, Reeves was, by many accounts, the most feared lawman in the territory. He claimed to have arrested over 3,000 men and women. One man rose to challenge their lawlessness. Many suspect Reeves was the inspiration for one of the most famous characters of the Western genre, the Lone Ranger. True or not, Reeves' life as a lawman would make a great screenplay. But the Lone Ranger, like many other heroes in Western films, is a white man. What those stories do is, for one, they whitewash the history of the West and erase black cowboys, but they also center on this narrative of manifest destiny, which at its very core was exclusionary to blacks in this country. Real life cowboy and rodeo performer Bill Pickett appeared in a few films in the 1920s. But when it came to black cowboys on the big screen, he was the exception, not the rule. There were black cowboys roaming the frontier, but where were they in Hollywood? Jim Crow segregation was just as much a part of the movie industry as anywhere else in America, and it affected what movies got made and for what audiences. Western starring black casts, made by black filmmakers and marketed for black audiences, were made during the Western movie boom under the category of race films. I'm a happy cowboy. Herb Jeffries was a black actor in the golden age of westerns. He starred in back-to-back -back films between 1937 and 1940 and became an icon. You tell him I said, if he ever draws that gun on me again, I'm gonna make him eat it. 
He helped open the door for more actors and filmmakers of color when the genre came back into style in spaghetti westerns and western-inspired black exploitation films. You make one move to get away, and I'm going to kill you. Yes, sir. But that's just what you'll have to do. In the 60s and beyond, Woody Strode played a tough-as-nails black cowboy. Specialist with rifle, rope, and longbow. In 1966, he starred in The Professionals, in which he played Jake a skilled and equal member of a four-man team on a mission to rescue a millionaire's wife. One black man and a band of four cowboys. That's a little more right. Strode made audiences reimagine what a black cowboy and a black man could be. Today, the genre is still changing. Just as the West itself promised reinvention, the Western movie genre continues to reinvent itself as it cycles in and out of popularity. With time, the Western cinematic tradition may come to represent the truly multi-ethnic reality of the American West. In the meantime, think again of that cowboy. What do they look like? Maybe they're still wearing that classic denim and hat, still atop a horse. But maybe they're a champion cowgirl. Maybe they're riding through the streets of Los Angeles. There is another story to be told, and it's lingering somewhere in the archive, but also in the oral histories of the African Americans who've actually lived it. Want to experience more history behind an American icon? Watch the documentary Riveted, The History of Jeans.